It's just a smile. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, all right, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Um, Willie, do you want to kick off? And then we'll go to Carol second. So she's got a 2.30 departure. Any uh, any real change in availability over week to week? No, uh, the same availability as we had last week. Uh, nobody's dropped out and nobody's come back yet. Um, we're hoping to have uh, Gibril back in the country next week. Uh, hopefully, um, his visas, I think he's just waiting for his passport to get back now and he'll be back. So that'll be another one added. Um, Brandt is, is very close to coming back as well. Uh, the distance he's covered this week in training is, is up there now, back to fitness. Um, he might need some minutes in a game uh, that we'll look to get him. Um, but apart from that, this weekend is every as as was last weekend. What changes over the course of the last couple of weeks? I know the sample size will grow, but what have you noticed about the second halves of games? I know it's kind of match dependent, but trying to get more chance creation in the second half. Um, I felt in in both games so far, um, you know, the New York game, we were pro we probably defended a little bit deeper. Um, Restricted them to very few chances, but created some on our own. Uh, we didn't create so many against Vancouver in the second half, with the exception of, I think, Patrick's header. Um, there wasn't too many. But saying that, we didn't give too many away as well. So, you know, that's the positive side of it. But our creativity needs to be better in the final third. And for me, it was just our final pass at times, and that's something that we've worked on. What have you noticed about kind of the way this back line has looked? Because obviously last year was last year. And I'm not talking about last year, but what have you noticed about just your own observations with them since the preseason and developing until now? I think when you look at us without the ball, I think we look really connected as a, as a team. Um, there's no spaces to play in between us, which is good. So teams are having to go around us or over us. Um you know, they went over us a couple of times and got chances where they probably shouldn't have. Um, again, you know, individual mistakes have probably led to them. So that has been a lack of concentration. But certainly how how well connected we've been, our distances have been really good. Um, and that's something that we've worked on that's been pleasing. You were a man of your word. Seven days ago, you said we have a player in seven days. Now it's been coming, there'll be a player here seven days later. What are your thoughts on your new addition? I'm really pleased. Um you know, he's a player that I know well, obviously, coming from the UK. Um, I know he's been playing in Scotland, uh, but, you know, uh, there's not many English people who don't know about Celtic and Rangers players because they're, they're always in the news and they're on the TV a lot. They're, they're both two big, big clubs. And to get a player of his calibre and the consistency that he's had in the last couple of seasons with Celtic is... Is a, a big coup for that for ourselves, I believe. What does he add? What does he what will he add? Uh he'll add creativity in the final third. He scores goals and he creates goals. Um I think the last two seasons he's probably scored ten and created seven or eight. You know, if you're getting a player, uh, a wide player that's you know, having eighteen goal involvements a season, then yeah, that's a good player. Yeah. Dean, I know um, in nor normal circumstances, you make a point to welcome new players. But given the unusual circumstances, he'll be coming in. A lot of other ways you have in mind of making him feel comfortable and welcome. Well, sorry, what would be... The political pressure to the still... Listen, I don't, I don't get involved in politics, so yeah. there's there's nothing for me. It's, it's uh, you know, an Israeli international player who's coming over to play for us, but... He's a human being. He's a football player, first and foremost. So that's how he'll be treated at this club. Yeah, just to talk to him. Only by text so far. Um, yeah, really looking forward to working with him. Um, I know Z and Bobby have spoken to him and, um, you know, seems to be a really humble guy. I've spoke to other players and people who've worked with him as well, obviously, to, to get my due diligence and all the reports have been really positive. One last one. Uh, you said you want to get minutes for... Veronica in a game, are those senior team game or legacy minutes or? I, either for me, um, you know, if it has to be a legacy game, then then it will be so. And, you know, that, that's the option I believe that we have to have for our players unless we can, you know, try and arrange some in-house games for, for our players when they need minutes. So, you know, we're looking at the moment at the, the fixture list to, to see where we can get games for some of our players. Steve, Steve. Steve. 
Um, how do you solve a problem like Insigne and Bernadeschi? Um, you you have to solve it because that's what you're coming up against. Um, I watched both of them players playing in the Euro Championship against England in the final three years ago, four years ago now, three years ago, 20, 2021. Um, exceptional players. Um, you know, in Toronto, I've got some really good players. I've got Matty Longstaff, who's just gone in there. They've got Kevin Long, who's, who's now there at centre-back, who, who I know from, you know, uh, the Premier League. So, yeah, they've got some really interesting individuals there. Um, but we have to concentrate on ourselves more more than them. You know, we've we've done very well defensively. Um, we've restricted the opposition. You know, we're probably coming up another level now against them two players who you mentioned. So, our concentration levels have got to be good. But, as I said early, then distances for our defensive formation has got to be good as well. And they've been especially effective against Charlotte. Uh, they made their debut two years ago against Charlotte, uh, assisting a goal uh, between them. And in, in one game, they assisted each other on goals against Charlotte. But last year, they were uh, Toronto was a bit of a, a dumpster fire, you know, winning the wooden spoon, or if you can win that. Um, but they seem to be a, a different team this year, you know, a little more cohesive and stuff. What have you seen? Have you, what else have you seen from them in, in the video that you've seen? I, well, I've watched both of their games. I mean, fortunately for us, the game was on Sunday, so I could watch that live. I thought they were fortunate to win the game, um, you know, and they'll probably admit that themselves. I thought New England had some really good chances during the game. And uh, I think over the two games, their goalkeepers had a really good game, you know, so he's kept them in, um, you know, a couple of the games. But uh, they've shown some attacking flair themselves. Um, Bernard Yeshi has had a number of chances in both games. Um, the teams against him have got some good blocks at times. Uh, you know, I thought, so it's going to be a tough game for us. But, you know, as I've always said, we'll respect the opposition, but have no fear. I think that's where he's been most fruitful for, for Celtic, playing off the right. Um, you know, and he can be an exciting player there. Um, but he can play off the left as well. So, you know, he's not just going to be pigeonholed in one position. Um, but he gives us options and that's what you want. So we want... I feel that's been an area... You know, uh, in our in our squad that's been lacking a little bit, so you know, I think that's really going to strengthen us. You mentioned you you played with Vargas in that position because you liked him more direct. Are you considering maybe switching him back to the left and having a competition with Yuri? Is that cross your mind or? I think there's got to be competition all round. That's what I want. You know, you've you've got Nymph who's, you know, uh, wanting to to get minutes. Um, you know. When we get a barger available to play, I want him to be wanting minutes. And the same with Kerwin and, and Yuri. And you know, Yuri's got an assist and a goal so far in his first two two games, which is great for us. And you know, Kerwin was probably the player that caused the most problems to Toronto. Uh, sorry, um, to Vancouver last weekend. Um, you know, probably his final ball needed to be a little bit better on the day. Um, but he certainly gets in really good positions. And then last thing you mentioned, you know. Watching that Toronto game, right? They, they didn't play well particularly, but they have a difference maker in that squad, like in senior. Do you feel Abada can be that difference maker for Charlotte with another player here that has maybe that capability to put the team on their back and create something out of I, I think he's got the uh, the capabilities of creating and scoring. And, you know, in any team, you know, that's what you want. You want that creation and that goal scoring um, ability and so that can only enhance the team and I've said many times before for me it's, it's always got to be about the team rather than individuals and you know uh, just having text messages with him he sees himself as coming in as being a really good team player so, yes yeah, still yeah um, so coach um, wanted to ask you what um now that you've played a couple of MLS matches and you look at the quality of the Scottish League, you look at the quality of BPL championship where you've been, um, what where do you think MLS ranks and how can somebody like Abada uh, make a difference at what is usually perceived as a lower level league? Um, I'm still not sure, to be honest, where the MLS ranks. Uh, it, it's, it's difficult after only, you know, uh, a sample of games, you know, 
one away in Vancouver, one at home against New York, which is always going to be a little bit tense being, you know, the first game. So I think once I get to a dozen games and I've seen a lot more, then I'll have more of an idea of where I believe, the, you know, the MLS is. Um, as far as Rangers and Celtic are, are concerned, you know, with the SPL, they could they could be playing in the Premier League, in the English Premier League, that's for sure, given the size of the squads um, and the size of the clubs. And then my, my second question for you today is, and going off of Carol's question, uh, there are a lot of uh, political controversies and statements uh, in the league right now, um, you know, not just um, with Nevada coming over, but, um, you know, over the past week, there is, uh, since the day, last time we spoke to you, it was announced that the U.S. Open Cup, the you know the version of the FA Cup here, um, that most MLS teams were going to withdraw from it. Um, do you have any message to fans um, when it comes to people uh, who are disappointed in the cup and us and thinking about uh, boycotting games? Yeah, my message is to you know stick with the players, the staff, and the and the club. You know, unfortunately, decisions get made out of our hands. Um, you know, I don't think there's a, a head coaches union, you know, uh, in, in, in the US. There's one in the UK where I'm an executive board member still called the LMA. Um, so I don't know how we make our voices known, uh, you know, in, 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 the, in the US. I think that's something, you know, once I get my feet, you know, firmly under the table that, I can maybe look at and speak to other head coaches because, you know, I, I feel as coaches and players then as major stakeholders in in what is, you know, a great game, we should be be involved in decisions like that. So, um, you know, hopefully we can be in the future. And finally, question about the Toronto match. Uh, you know, Charlotte C is still winless on Canadian soil. What are, are you planning on doing to uh, bring home a win this time? Um... Been more consistent through the 90 minutes. You know, uh, I'm really disappointed and even watching the tape back and watching the game back, we, we should have won the game against Vancouver. You know, we were really dominant in the first half. We'll give a really soft goal away. Um, you know, and I still don't understand why the actual VAR penalty decision was taken away. But you've got to take chances and we didn't. So that is football. Um, but we've got a lot of confidence in the team at the moment. We feel we've got some momentum there. Uh, you know, but the one thing that's probably been di the biggest difference for me in the, you know, going to sampling an away game last week at Vancouver, I know there was a few of our fans there and which we're, we're really thankful for traveling that far away, but I didn't know where they were. They we kind of walked out, walked out before the game and it was very quiet and I'm not used to that. Normally you've got you know, two or 3,000, you know, away fans and you know where they are and you can hear them. So, you know, I'm sure there'll be a few more traveling to Toronto, so please make yourself known where you are, and I'll come over and give you a give you a wave. That's for sure. Thanks, coach. Good luck and safe travels. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Still. Back to the the travel aspect of it. That was your first big trip with this club, and it was the longest trip you'll have going all the way out to Vancouver. How did you guys, you know, handle the non-game stuff in terms of the the preparation and and the setup and the time change and all that? Time change you won't deal with this week, but. How, how did that function from, from your seat? Yeah, the, the prep was really good, to be honest. And, and I said that to the players. There'll be no excuses from, from us in terms of, you know, how we play, um, about the travel and, and what we did. We we did it all well. We we travelled the day before. Um, we had enough rest on the day, went to the game. The hard part is obviously recovering when you get back. You know, you're landing at five o'clock in the morning and, you know, you're trying to grab four four hours sleep on the on the the airplane as well. So, so it's a bit of a broken sleep, and you're catching up in the early part of the week. So, but I think we've recovered well now, and we're ready to go to Toronto. So, in terms of what I've experienced so far, yeah, it's it was like a five hour bus journey to Newcastle away. And previously, you had said you were, you were looking to add one or two more players. Avada would be one. Are you are are you still of that mind after having? Camp and Coachella and a couple of games now. Do you still feel that there's a need to add more, or do you do you like the makeup right now? Yeah, no, I think we we're still looking for more. We're still looking for you know maybe one or two. Um, you know we want to add quality to the squad, and, and that's why we take our time and, and get the right players. Um, we we believe that Lil Abada will be the right player and the right person, the right 
with the right um, character. Um, that's why we've taken so long to to make sure it's the right thing for us, and we'll do the same again. Um, you know, with the next one, the recruitment's so important. Um, you know, but it's also tough as well. Uh, he's working extremely hard. Um, you know, he's creating enough chances. He created a penalty, I believe, that he should have should have stayed awarded because there was no clear and obvious error to to overturn it for me. Um, you know, the referee probably got the wrong call to go back over to to look at it again. Um, there has to be a clear and obvious error. Uh, you know, he he's got a chance where he's had a one on one. Um, you know, he's had a header in the first half as well, uh, in the second half as well. So he's doing a lot of good work. You know, goals will come. I keep saying, as long as you get chances, you'll score goals. You, you mentioned the referee a couple of times. Tell in the room is that these are all replacement referees. Uh, have you, any, you, you know, obviously, this is your first year in MLS, but compared to what you've experienced in the past, is it noticeable? No, I think the referee, I think the officiating has been okay. I, I haven't had a problem with that. Um, you know, I listen, I'd have been unhappy if that penalty had been given against me. It was a soft penalty. But once the official has given it, then there's no way it can be overturned, in my opinion, from VAR. And VAR, I believe, are not. Um, I think they're the same VAR that are normally doing it. Is that what I'm led to believe or not? Still, also, this one. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, it's convoluted. It's, it's, it's like, they're like staff members. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah, so they probably just got that wrong. Fair enough. Yeah, no worries. Nick, Going back to what Sam was talking about having Crown Legacy play at the U.S. Open Cup, what are the positives of the of having the second team play in the U.S. Open Cup? I think, you know, I'm I'm a bit of a traditionalist, you know, so I see the U.S. Open Cup as the FA Cup in the U.K. Um, you know, so it's a it's a big trophy to play, um, and unfortunately, probably the FA Cup has been diminished a little bit in the U.K. Probably since the day Manchester United were made to go and play in the World Club Championship rather than playing the, the tournament itself. Um, you know, so the U US Open, I think it's really tough that, you know, we're, I think there's eight teams allowed to play in it now, is there? And the rest of the MLS, are they're the they're, they're next pro teams. But what it will do for us is enhance our next pro teams. Um, the players are going to get an experience of playing open age, open age football um, against you know, uh, some really good teams. So it's going to be a challenge for them and it's going to give them a lot of experience and hopefully experience that, you know, we can have future members come through into our first team from. Earlier this season, you talked about how you had Jose Tavares were part of the preseason. Can you talk about your connection with them and your connection to the Crown Legacy in general? Yeah, I've, I've not managed to to see the, the Legacy play so far, but... You know, our connect, my connection with Jose is really tight so far, um, which is really pleasing. Um, you know, we talk regular, we talk about players. We have a te technical meeting once once a week as well uh, to talk how, you know, uh, the team has gone, the legacy team has gone and the players who are doing well. So, you know, that relationship I see enhancing and, and going on. I'm looking forward to, I think, next Sunday will be their first game. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to going and watch that game. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I'm going to open cup follow uh, it Just with the Open Cup, too, it uh, has now eliminated another path to the CONCACAF Champions Cup because it was, depending on where you entered, third or fourth round, it was also six or seven victories to a spot because a winner gets a spot in the CONCACAF Champions Cup from there, too. So it's eliminated that possibility for teams you know, further down the, the table. Yeah, it has. And as I say, unfortunately, that decision has been taken out of our hands. So, you know, we have to just get on with it because we're not involved in decision making, unfortunately. True. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Bridget and then Carlos. Okay. Hi. Um, I was going to go back to Toronto. This year, they seem to be more physical this season, more like the New York Red Bulls. Is there anything that you've worked on with the team um, this week to go up against them? Probably like you, I think they've noticed that I think there's been eight yellow cards as the so far cautions in there in uh, they've had so far. The big thing for me is concentrating ourselves. We can't control what that what they do. We've got to have good emotional control. Um, you know, good tactics and a good game plan to go and beat them. So we have to concentrate on ourselves, and and we will do. Um, you know, as I say, I've been fortunate to watch their couple of games so far. Um, 
you know, they've had two clean sheets. Uh, but I think New England, their XG was something like 1.8 in the game against 0.6, which tells you the way the game has gone. So, you know... Uh, 23 shots. 23 shots as well, you know. So it's a lot of attempts. We've got to make sure that, you know, we're on the front foot because we know it's their first home game and they'll want to please their supporters. And then last year also, we had a, had a lot of Olympico threats. Is that something that y'all worked on in practice this week as well? Oh, what, sorry, threats? Olympico threats, like corner shots? It was like score and rapid. We got score and rapid in the corner last year. So right. it's depending. Yeah, no, this, we conceded a goal second phase last week from, from a set piece. Um, they're so important. We scored one, obviously, in the first game. They're really important. And we've been working on them religiously because... As I said, when I first came in, set pieces is something that we need to work on and, and be strong at. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be ready for them. Thank you. No worries. All right, Carlos. Hey, Coach. Uh, the last season, we received a lot of goals at the last minute of the game. Same thing what happened last game in Vancouver. Do you something uh, do it about avoiding the situation in the future? Avoid the situation? Of... They've taken uh, a goal to the last minute. Yeah, we've... I think if you've got your defensive discipline right, then and your concentration levels, then you you shouldn't be giving up big chances. And we haven't given up too many big chances. I mean, Nathan's made a mistake for the big chance. I think where you know uh, Callie's made the save and then Privet's cleared it. Apart from that, there wasn't too many. You know, I can't really remember Callie diving around his goal, having to face one v ones. So the biggest thing for me is making sure our concentration levels are good. And that's something we've been working with players with. Thank you. Okay. Last call. Anyone else with anything? Yeah, John. Thanks, okay, John. final one here. You, you uh, are in circle of coaches. Uh, you seem to be uh, working with a lot of coaches. Do you have any familiar with Harry and John Herman and the, the manager of Toronto? No, I'm not, to be honest. No. Uh, I know he's from the UK. I went down to Miami for the market, MLS market, yeah. and he was there as well. So came into contact with him, but no, no, don't really know. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll wrap up there. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Thank you.